Good morning, JCS. I'm Mr. John Prudek, and I'm pleased to be here this morning interviewing our very own Caleb Kim. Caleb Kim. Let's give it up for Caleb Kim. Wow. Round of applause. Paksu. Paksu. Wow, Paksu. So, Caleb, as our oldest student, but not for long, because <laughs> Caleb is going to be on his way to New York. New York, the Big Apple. Yeah. That's right. So, we have some questions for Caleb. Uh, Caleb, what's our theme for today's chapel? Um, endurance and hope. And why'd you pick these two topics? So, during my college preparation, I guess those were the two virtues that were the most important. Because hmm. I think it's very hard to like continue doing your best during preparation. And also, I think hope is the motivation that you have that kind of like drives you to the end. Yes. Very good. Wise words to listen to. <laughs> if you want to be successful, listen to Caleb. Here's a nice <laughs> wow. picture of Caleb looking happy. Tell me about this picture, Caleb. Uh, we went to Jeju hmm. um, this spring break, and I forgot where that is, but <laughs> it was a part of like a not a mountain, but like a hill, and they had these. What are those? Reeds? Hmm. I guess. And、um, it was very windy, so we just wanted to take a picture there. And it was happy.、Yeah. I imagine that's probably something what you looked like when you found out the news <laughs> about NYU. Yeah, 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 yeah. pretty much. <laughs> yes. All right, we're going to be looking back at、uh, Caleb's experience here at JCS. So, first question, Caleb What were some of your most memorable moments here at JCS? Okay, so I, I've been here about seven years, I think,、mm. and、um, I've been to a lot of trips with, like, as a school, and,、uh, and I have done a lot of musicals, but I think the most memorable would, would be the Gyeongju trip, our graduation trip to Gyeongju.、Mm. Um, uh, it was fun,、mm. and we, we ate like, a lot of brunch,、mm. and I really liked that part, and we also like, just chilled. And, Yeah, it was very stress relieving, I think.、Mm. Yeah. As a graduation trip should be. Yes. And on that Kyungju trip, I, I, th- I think it was kind of like before the breaking of the fellowship. You've seen Lord <laughs> of the Rings. Before、mm. uh, each of those people went their separate ways,、mm-hmm. but it was a good time.、Uh, I remember on the Kyungju trip, yes, there was the brunch.、Uh, we also stayed at a place with a really nice view. Right. Uh, and I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah. What, what's the name of that place where they have like a pond that's in the shape of Korea or something like that? Does that sound familiar to you? Was it like near a museum? I think so. But there's also the astronomy or the、uh, observatory,、mm-hmm. the, like ancient observatory. Oh, Chomsong. Yeah, Chomsong.、Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Gyeongju trip, very memorable. Yeah. All right. What about. Challenging moments. So, we talked about some of the memorable moments. What about challenging moments?、Um, as I said,、um, Gyeongju trip was memorable,、uh, memorable because、mm. it was stress relieving, which means that there were some factors that gave me stress. And、um, I think like, this particular challenge was like, most strong during my like, ninth or tenth grade.、Mm. And so, this challenge was. Um, after I left my public school,、mm. I had still like connection with them, like the friends there, and、um, through social media. And when I saw like the photos they uploaded and、um, just the posts,、um, they, were always, they always looked very happy and they were always in Norebang or Pishibang、mm. and in this big size of groups. And I, I always like was envy of them, kind of. But so I thought the size of our school was like the. Like the challenge that I had. But after like, finding out that actually it's not the challenge, but it's actually the strength that our school has, actually, because I, have, I was like, privileged enough to have a lot of opportunities here. And since the school is smaller, the teachers,、um, we have more time to spend with teachers, and the education is almost like customized for ourselves. And so when I found out that It was very, like, like, the size of our school was a very good aspect of our school. I didn't feel envy. And、um, the most important part was that the, 
the students in the public school were actually envy of us. So mm. it's it's just um, I forgot the saying in English, but grass looks greener on the other side or something the like that. The grass is always greener. Uh, the on grass the other side. is greener on the other side. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, tell us what's going on in these pictures. Why did you pick these two pictures for the challenging mm. aspect of your experience? So um, I was mostly envy because of the like how socialized they were kind of and how like by quantity how many friends they had but um i realized that we had our own community here and due to opportunities that we have i could like be a part of the asb and i i could also present my own videos mm. to everyone in this school and to share my thoughts and um, although that video is not really a very <laughs> serious <laughs> video, it was very fun to share how we had fun. And mm. yeah, so there are op opportunities that come from like our size. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Well, obviously you come to high school so that you can eventually, hopefully, one day go to college. Yes. How did you prepare for college and how did you decide which colleges to apply to? Um, so it's a big question. I yeah, think. it's a very big question. And I think there's another question like in the end that makes me to explain that more specifically, like at least the first part, but... You can see the future. <laughs> no, but I'm kind of prepared for this interview. Um, Good. <laughs> yes. Uh, so how I prepared for college. That's, okay. Um, so to be honest, Eat I don't... your vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> there's Eight hours list. of sleep. <laughs> Oh, yeah, actually, sleeping is very important. Mm. But um, what I was trying to say, I think, was um, more than how I did, but I think I kind of want to define this period of college preparation time for me was, like, the time where I got to know myself mm. and the time where I really needed to reflect and see who I am in the context, in, like, the worldly context as well as in the biblical context as, like, a Christian. So I think that came mostly from essays and yeah, so I, I wasn't really, I didn't feel like I was ready for college preparation. I, I just think that it's mostly like you, you jump into it cause you need to mm. and just things come at you and you really need to just do it. Um, and there are deadlines and it's very stressed, like it's very stressful, but I just, I just think I tried like to stay optimistic during the preparation cause it's not going to help you if you just think nothing's going to happen no matter how much effort I put in. But I just try to think that every college I apply to, there is some chance that this college would be the college that I will go to. And so I think that motivated me. And how did you decide which colleges to apply to? Um, this question, I'm kind of very, like, I'm not very proud of this, um, how I chose colleges because um, I chose 35 colleges. Did you and say 35? Yeah, 35. 35. Yes, that's a lot of colleges. And the biggest reason why I, I, why I applied to so many colleges is because I was kind of, I was kind of afraid that I would feel like very depressed if I was so much into one college mm. that I would like really want to get into that college. So I was kind of afraid of like the outcome, I think. I think that was one of the biggest reasons why I did that. But also, <laughs> it's a very, this is not mathematical, but it's just, I guess there's more chance that you'll get into a school and that you'll get financial aid and scholarship if you just apply to more schools. It's like brute forcing. I mean, yeah. yeah. So I think that was the reason. So Do yeah, I don't know English expressions. Reasons. You weren't putting all your eggs in one basket. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Now, Let's see. We've got picture here. Uh, what 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 do these pictures have to do with your college preparation process? So I think people ask me like how I prepare for college, in the sense that I prepared something like else than what they're given to. But I think I just did what the school told me to do. And like that video, that thumbnail of a video is a video where um, Dr. Lee shares his tips for like college preparation and. I just did everything that the school wanted me to do and, <laughs> and I guess that worked. And also the second photo there is um, when I went to college vision trip mm. and that's right in front of 
the Golden State Bridge. Golden Gate Bridge. Golden Gate Bridge, not the Golden State. But it is but in the Golden California State. Is the That's Golden right. State. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, and so I think I was very motivated when I went to the college vision trip, as well as the students who went to college vision trip this year. Yeah, just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So here we have another question on college preparation. What kind of extracurricular activities did you do? Um, like mentioned, I've kind of only did things in school almost, hmm. like except for a few things. Like um, I designed a T-shirt and didn't win the contest, but I won third place, and I guess that was something. But hmm. mostly it was just school stuff, and um. I th those photos are from my ASB experience and my Greenpeace um, activities, and so those were. I had more like other extracurriculars too, like music goes marathons. But I think those were the most memorable for me and like the most helpful because I was a leader of a group, and although like. Practically, I didn't have that much responsibility. It's not like I need to feed people and stuff <laughs> like that. But still, like there was this kind of pressure. But I think it was a good pressure that mm. kind of motivated me and made me to. I think it was like the first time where I was motivated due to responsibility as mm. a leader. And I think that is a very great lesson you can learn from um, participating as a leader. Mm. Yeah. I think there's a key word in there. Do you know how coals are turned into diamonds? Compressed? Pressure. Pressure, yeah. yes. So here we have in front of us a <laughs> diamond ready to be admitted into wow. NYU. <laughs> Once upon a time, he was a diamond in the rough. <laughs> now he is a diamond for the world to see. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, now we're looking forward. Speaking of sending this diamond out into the world... <laughs> Which university are you going to attend? Hmm. I am going to attend uh, New York University. New York University. Yeah. And what were... Oh, so why I chose this college. So um, I think I kind of like hit this desire that I had in me to myself even hmm. when I was in like 11th grade and when, and when I was getting into college preparation. I like NYU was always my dream school because it was it is like the top school for film major and that was and yeah so it was always my dream school and when I got into when I found out that I was able to go to NYU um, that desire just like I, I, I found that desire in myself mm. like again I, mm. I was like hiding that I guess I kind, kind of but because of that feeling I knew that I needed to kind of study film I, I like that confirmation kind of um, came to me again mm. after yeah and so I just chose NYU also because of the financial aid they mm. were providing me and most importantly it's in New York mm -hmm. City and all along from the get-go my dream city was New York City I think and due to a lot of movies like I mean that I think those two uh, Spider-Man the original series uh, not the original but Toby like McGuire yeah Toby yeah. McGuire with uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man series I think I don't really remember that much about the movies but like the just the the feeling of mm. New York is I think the very yeah yeah, yeah 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 and so like I I don't think it's like easy to live there mm. even like movies show how challenging it is mm -hmm. to survive in New York and but what they say about New York is if you can make it there you can make it anywhere <laughs> yeah so mm. I think that kind of also attracted me to that city like Tick Tick Boom in that movie mm. too and kind of yeah I I, I wanted to get challenged mm. in a place that was beautiful mm -hmm. but also very challenging mm. to survive in mm. yeah yeah, maybe that could encapsulate New York spirit. It's beautifully challenging. <laughs> yes, but you're definitely right. There is a certain, as the French say, a certain je ne sais quoi about <laughs> France. They're up, not je France. Je ne sais quoi? Up, about France as well. A certain, well, in French, je ne sais quoi means I don't know what. I don't know But why. New York has a certain, I don't mm. know what, a certain je ne sais quoi about it, a certain atmosphere that mm. is just in, in all the subways mm. and in all the benches and all the parks and all right. the smelly alleyways and, yeah. I would love to live in New York, mm. so honestly, I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> uh, so, were there any special reasons why you chose to major in film? 
Um, I think you most of the people have a lot of different reasons for what they do. And for me, I think my dad had the greatest mm. like impact on me for this because my dad also studied film for undergraduate um, as an undergraduate and um, he when after when we watched like a film that was good we always talked about it and when god my god my dad talked about it like the enthusiasm that he had and mm. how how deep he gets into it i was very like astonished about it and um, I think I had interest in film like since I was a baby because of not a not since I was a baby but since I was in like elementary maybe mm. and I think when I almost like chose to become a director was when my dad talked about his professor's question said and they would move the camera underground to follow the mole and some others said that they would attach a camera to the mole's head like mm -hmm. a GoPro. Mm -hmm. However, this professor's answer to the question was to show the soil on the ground that has been dug up to show how deep the mole was digging. Mm. And so I was like surprised. I think it's because how film is a very visual art, mm. although you can choose what not to show. And that is like the most visual way mm. of showing something kind of. And that irony kind of, I think that kind of made me like think about it so much mm. that I was just thinking about it every time and I always came up with other answers for this pro uh, this question and it was just really fun to think about it how like the choice you have to show something and not to show something and so my I think my dad had the most impact in choosing my path mm. yeah it reminds me of something a friend of mine said when I was your age about music rather mm. than about film he said Silence is a part of music. <laughs> and I thought, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mm. were there any movies that you watched with your dad that stick out in your mind as movies that were perhaps formative or that you both really enjoyed together? I think it was Parasite. Hmm. Yeah. Paras I think we talked the most about Parasite after we watched it. We watched it like in midnight and mm. we came out from the theater during like 2 a.m. I see. With my older brother Micah and my dad like three the three of us and then we went to McDonald's after that <laughs> at like on, in three on 3 a.m and we talked about it a lot with french fries and stuff and so I think that was like the most memorable discussion I had with my dad hmm. very cool yeah so you were offered a lot of scholarships from many great schools mm -hmm. you were mm -hmm. offered scholarships mm -hmm. to Brandeis mm -hmm. uh, you would have gotten I believe a full ride to Brandeis yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and you received pretty significant scholarships from other schools yeah. including Biola and Azusa Pacific uh, what why yeah. do you think that was possible what made that possible <laughs> um, it's very hard to answer this question but like before that I think I think I need to say this but it's, I don't think it's not 100% just scholarship. Mm. It's a lot of it was paid, mm. and I mean, of course, um, I did get scholarship because of my work, but um, it's, it was also my like condition too. Mm. But to answer the question, I think it was the essay, the recommendation letters, and my portfolio mm. portfolio a portfolio yeah so for those students who might not know what a portfolio is what is a portfolio uh so a portfolio is like your profile picture i guess kind of so um a film portfolio would be um you need to put all these like essence of your works into it and show very in very in a very short time um how much skilled you are and and what thoughts you have, what you want to tell other people, your story, and things like that. Um, for NYU specifically, they asked me to write like a short novel also, and mm. uh, to make a short film, to make a, like a self-introducing video. And so that's kind of like a portfolio, at least for like college application. Mm. But for like, I guess for like the industry, it's totally different. Mm. But for this um, college preparation stuff, uh, portfolios are most likely telling who you are and what you want to do when you go to that college. Hmm. Yeah. And I believe that it's not just film majors who submit portfolios. Yeah. Portfolios are often submitted by art students yeah. as well. Uh, journalism students yeah. also oh. submit per portfolios. So speaking of college, what are you look most looking forward to about college? Um, it might sound really boring, but as it is a college, I'm most, most excited about learning film 
and <laughs> yes, I am. Um, because I think film is a study. I mean, it's not a core subject, <laughs> um, and so I don't think most students have the opportunity to learn about film that deeply in during like everyday life. During like this, like a normal school wouldn't teach film, hmm. and so to have that opportunity to learn about film is really exciting for me, and. Also, I am also、um, excited to make new friends and、um, to have friends who are actually like interested in the same things as I am, but also different in a way. And and also, I was always in like I was always in Korea, and all my friends were from similar backgrounds, I guess, like culturally.、Mm. But if I go to NYU, I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of different、um, people from different backgrounds and. I'm really inter- I'm really interested in diversity and to learn more about different people,、um, in general. Yeah. Yeah, you will meet a lot of different kind of people. Yeah. At NYU. Yeah. Very diverse in many different ways. <clears throat> so once you are graduated from NYU, that'll be about four years from now, unless you speed things up. What are your dreams and goals after college? Um. As a student who will major in film,、um, the most like、um, close dream that I have is to become a film director and to make a featured film,、hmm. a feature-length film, and、um, to be very ambitious about it. I would want also to win, win like some film awards, like how Bong Joon-ho did,、hmm. and、um, <laughs> yeah, and also. The reason why I want to win awards is also because of like the glory he you can get, of course. But I think it's because how much influence you have, and、um, I want to use that influence to make good changes into the world. And how like how、um, director Bong did, he he made some social commentaries with his、mm. movies, and every almost like a lot of people watched it, and it was a very renowned work, and so he won a lot of awards. And I think. That's why I want to win awards to like have my own voice and to somehow represent other people who don't have their voices through film.、Hmm. Giving、yeah. voice to the voiceless. Yes. Other than Bong Joon-ho, are there any other favorite directors of yours? Um, I really like Kore da Hirokazu. He's a Japanese film director. Actually, he is directing a Korean film this、mm. year. Um, yeah. So I'm very interested in that movie, and I also like. Um, David Fincher,、mm. as he is like the classic film director, and he's he's just so good. Yes, <laughs> yes, I love David Fincher. <laughs> so、uh, we're now on to the thanks to section, the part of the show where just like Bong Joon Ho did <laughs> after he won his Oscars, wh- whom did he thank in his th- in his award? Oh, actually,、speech? he thanks Martin Scorsese. Did I mean, he? he didn't like thank Scorsese, but he shouted out he shouted it out、um, Quentin Tarantino and、mm. Martin Scorsese, and he said his like most famous line. Martin Scorsese's famous line: "The most personal thing to you is the most creative thing to you."、Mm. The most creative thing. By the way, Martin Scorsese is also an alumnus of NYU. Ah, there you、yeah. go. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So I've I've often heard the advice: write about what you know.、Mm. And so Bong Joon Ho did a film about Korea. Martin Scorsese,、mm-hmm. almost all of his movies are set in New York. So write about what you know. I guess you'll be one day making a film about Korea. small Christian schools in Nissan. <laughs> <Arizona. laughs> wow, <laughs> very specific. <clears throat> so, as the valedictorian. Okay. Of <laughs> class of 2022, is there any advice you'd give to JCS students? Okay, so、um, I was asked to give five tips five to tips. the students. Five tips. Okay. And、um, I don't think I can like elaborate all those tips, but I think mostly the encapsulating theme here is to just do it. I guess like the Nike slogan. And th- my first tip would be. The most cliche thing you can say、um, in Disney movies,、um, although Kung Fu Panda is not a Disney movie, it's a DreamWorks movie. Yeah. But、um, be yourself, I guess,、mm. and know yourself,、um, because it's. I don't think it's. I'm not saying like you should be irresponsible and just be yourself and do whatever you want to do.、Mm. I think the indeed like the reason why I'm saying this is because of realistic reasons, and because if you know yourself, you will know your next step and. 
it will be like the your path will be more clear i guess and to your very near future it's very helpful for you when you write your college essays mm. yeah and my second tip was enjoy and use everything you have access to to the fullest extent because mm. i think we're we have a lot of opportunities um not just relatively but like objectively i think we have a lot of privileges and opportunities that we can take and i just think um we should um take those opportunities and my third one is just do it i won't elaborate that <laughs> and number four was trust the process i think um a lot of cult might say this like trust the process <laughs> but um i think like at least if you're in the right hands and if if your parents really want the best for you i think you really need to try your best until you get something out of it and that you shouldn't just give up because you don't see like the outcomes right away but i think you should just ask for it and keep doing it like the bible says i guess um because it says knock the door then <laughs> i don't know the verse knock exactly the door will be opened in. yes yeah seek yes. and you will find yeah and the last one is keep your stance on things so i think um it's very easy these days to encounter different ideas all around the world and i think it's it's a very good thing um but uh, it might also be a very um uh it might like ill affect somebody because i think it's very hard to get have your own idea if you are just given so many different ideas right away even before you can think about it and so i think the reason why i was also like one of the motivations i had was because um i wanted to give voice to the voiceless and that stance i had not stance but like the goal i had um it's i think it's really important to just have one goal that doesn't change at like some at least one hmm. and i think that's very important hmm. yeah. yeah that was the last i'd say that's pretty good advice <laughs> so now is the part of our show where you give thanks or give a few words of thanks to the <laughs> teachers <laughs> yeah. who taught you over the years yeah i had no idea this slide <laughs> was going to be in there it's coming as a complete surprise <laughs> wow yes so um i'm very bad at uh explaining my emotions formally i think but i think to thank my teachers our teachers is i think the very like the very first thing i can think of that i'm thankful about our teachers is that they are not just teachers who teach you the acad academic um side of education but i think um all of you have taught us um as like mentors as life mentors and as christian mentors and the that part of our school and our teachers i think is something that is really important to make you keep working because if you don't have this bigger picture of what you're doing i think you a lot of times you forget what you're doing and why why you need to do it but i think the teachers keep motivate us and um know us and so Yeah, I'm very thankful. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> But uh in all seriousness, Caleb, you were a very good student and the wow. fact that you're getting into Tish is oh, evidence of that. Yeah. Uh you should also say a few words of thanks to my mom and dad. Parents. Yeah. So, um oh, I I don't think I've ever said thank you like in like sincerely in English to my parents. Mm. But let's see. Um so they've been very supportive and um they always trusted in me and i trusted in them because they trusted in me and um they were the reason why i could continue no matter how hard the process was mm. because they loved me and as a person who is loved i think it's not very um hard to find a reason why you need to actually try and so because of the love and the the knowledge that you have shared to me i have done this <laughs> i don't I, i mean i i don't think it's ever enough to how any like nothing a child can do is going to um fulfill how much your parents did to you mm. and i just think that i don't think it's a bad thing that you know that you 
I don't think you like, you shouldn't say that you owe something to your parents, but to know that you have somebody who will always have your back is very helpful. Hmm. And yeah, so thank you. Mm. Well, I'm sure your parents know that you love them and、mm. they're very proud of you. <laughs>、uh, what is one Bible verse you'd like to share with us today?、Um, it's related to the topic of today's interview, which is endurance and hope. And I think this is very helpful, like specific to students who are in the period of college preparation. So it is、um, not only、uh, Romans 5, chapter,、uh, I mean, Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5.、Um, Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So, I think this was very helpful for me during the college preparation, because,、um, like I said, it's, there are some challenges、um, during the college preparation period. I mean, everybody is、um, in challenge, but、um, specific to that, I think sometimes I just want to like try less than I was actually、hmm. because、um, there's nothing like guaranteed to you out of that effort, like different from homeworks. Because if you do, if you put your effort into homeworks, you will get an A or at least like a grade that corresponds to your effort. But for college preparation, you're just like, Pushing out everything you've done until now, you can't really do anything more than right now.、Mm. So, I think、um, there are a lot of times when you want to like give up almost. But since because of that suffering, I think I produced endurance.、Mm. And because of that endurance, I gained character. And I think the colleges see the hope that is produced from that character.、Mm. And so,、um, it's not very good to like. Uh, interpret the Bible very specifically, but、uh, for me like, personally, I thought that the colleges would see my endurance somehow. And yeah, so I think the Bible verse, this Bible verse, kept me going.、Hmm. Yeah. Very good. Well, that's all the questions we have today. Congratulations, Caleb. Before we're、uh, done, I'm going to pray for Caleb, and that'll be it for、uh, today's interview. Dear God, we thank you for Caleb and the character that we see in him as a result of all the effort he has put into his classwork. I pray that he would be、uh, set a good example and has set a good, has, pardon me, set a good example for other students. I pray that other students would see Caleb's effort and the、uh, success that you have granted to him and be motivated by that. But Lord, I pray that Caleb would. Find his identity not necessarily in his success, but in his identity as your child. I pray that you would strengthen him, strengthen his faith and his resolve as he goes to New York and is your witness in the Tisch, Tisch Film School there. Amen. Amen. See you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>